In my last video about the books, we delved into a basic summary of what was happening in the events of both Marta and Catalyst, which was a fairly good video all around, in which many had enjoyed their time in watching and consuming that portion of lore within the Dead Space universe. But for some, they felt like I needed to go further than I did, and really dive deep into the characters, lore, stories, and what further motivated them into doing what they did, along with how Marta ties into the games. The initial story begins in 2214, and ends in early 2215. However, the beginning of the book itself starts at the end, showing us the gruesome fate of Michael Altman, the events depict the origin of Unitology, the discovery of the Black Marker, and the first Necromorph outbreak. Michael's childhood is shrouded in mystery. Did he have a good one or a bad one? Is a question we cannot give a definitive answer for. However, what we do know is his career choices that ultimately led to his demise at the hands of Markov, Stevens, and Cracks. Michael's mother was of Native American heritage. However, Altman did not know of which tribe she had descended from. Michael's surname has two meanings, one being the one that makes the most sense, especially after his death being known as Wiseman, perfect to be the prophet of the marker, a wise man chosen to bring humanity to the next stage of evolution, and only would the believers hear his divine wisdom. At an unknown period of time, Michael would meet and begin dating his new girlfriend, Ada, along with becoming a geophysicist in Shikshalub, in order to be closer with his girlfriend, who also worked in Shikshalub. In 2214, he would be working in a field laboratory near to the Gulf of Mexico with his partner, James Field, when they would begin to discover a set of gravitational anomalies. As scientists, these anomalies would deeply interest them, as these readings hadn't been happening before, or at least for a very long period of time. So this would further motivate Michael into investigating further, which he would. Over the following days, Michael would call other scientists to get more information when his attempts to investigate would reach a dead end, prompting James to give up and move on. Due to Michael's fascination as to why these anomalies were happening, Michael would continue until he would get a call from an unknown man who would summon him to a bar in the town. The man, while being an enigma for his own protection, would tell him that Dredgercorp are investigating into the gulf, with them finding a pulse signal coming from a specific point deep under the Gulf of Mexico. This new information would further draw Altman in, giving him more of a motivation, and would dim the likelihood of burning him out. After a sub becomes unresponsive as they had descended down to the origin site of the pulse signals, Altman would gain a new lead into the mystery with someone giving him a heavily distorted video log. Michael would attempt to recover the footage and would post the video on the internet stating that Dredgercorp is hiding something, forcing them to address the situation by giving a standard cover story. Altman's next move would be to contact another organization with his findings about the crater, and shortly afterwards would lead to his eventual confrontation with Markov, who would force him to join their operation and work with them in finding the source to these readings. Over his time working with them, he would request for certain equipment to bring down with him, so that he may be able to defend himself against the fellow crew of the subs that he took down to the source. Eventually, Michael would find the marker and would help Markov to retrieve the source and transport it to the facility floating on the sea surface. 
However, while the other scientists would study the marker and the symbols plastered on the shell of the black marker, Michael would study a shard that had been extracted from it prior. While working, he would be visited by an apparition in the form of Ada's mother, who would warn him of the marker and of convergence, telling him that he needs to work with her to stop the marker. At this time, workers and other scientists began to worship the marker and claims that Michael Altman has seen it once he walks into the chamber. Altman would then place the marker shard back into the rest of the monolith, making the marker whole once again, then proceeds to vidlog it in an attempt to reveal to the public what he feels that they should know about, what has been kept hidden from them, especially with what was happening in the world, as the public were demanding answers to the medical world and authorities. Michael and Ada would be transported to the mainland in another facility. Feeling as if he was to be silenced, Altman takes his girlfriend with him and the pair would escape to America, fleeing to Washington, where Michael would hold a press conference showing them the marker he recorded. The following night, Cracks and the team that had been sent after them would catch up to them, capturing the pair, returning them to the floating facility on the surface of the Gulf of Mexico. Cracks would then separate the pair, torturing Altman. However, another scientist would save Altman by stating that the believers are going to riot and that Altman is the only one that can talk them down due to their beliefs. Cracks would let him go, reluctantly. However, the man would later tell him that he lied in order to save the profit of the marker as he too was a believer. Altman would then find a place to sleep where he would have yet another dream, this time of Ada and him walking on the shoreline on a beach where she tells him that she wants to have a baby with him, that it will bring them closer together when he would suddenly awaken, hearing alarms blaring, coming face to face with the first necromorph outbreak, with scientists, soldiers and other workers being butchered by the reanimated corpses, Altman would then escape the horrors of the waterbound facility and be visited by Ada once again, but in the way of an apparition, which gives him a shock, learning of Ada's death he would start to put two and two together, coming to the conclusion that the dreams were coming from the marker, not specifically as warnings, but something else. Michael would later return to the facility, seeking to stop the outbreak. Somehow, perhaps, if he returned, he could reason with the marker, he would think to himself. While traversing through the facility, Altman would come across many recombinated horrors before meeting another scientist who had locked themselves in with the marker. Upon gaining the trust of Harmon, he would unlock the door. Altman would attempt to contact the marker by touching it. However, unlike others, he would feel nothing. He would then lie to Harmon, telling him that the marker told Altman that he needs to return it to the bottom of the sea, that it needed to rest. Altman would destroy the facility, sinking it and the marker ceasing the outbreak. However, the signal would continue to be produced or sent out. Harmon and Altman would be speeding away on a boat as the facility sank, when everything for Michael would cut to black, when Harmon had knocked him out with an anchor. When he awoke again, he would be tied down to an operating table where he accused Crax of killing Ada, when Crax would tell him that she ended her own life while seeing an apparition. This is where Stevens and Markov reveal their plans in constructing the ultimate religion, Unitology. This is where Altman would be subjected to having to fight a brute form necromorph consisting of cracks and two other men's corpses. 
Markov would also reveal his plans to make Altman a martyr for the religion. This is where the ending to the book and the beginning of the book comes full circle. With Altman sharpening the spoon, Markov left for him against the wall. However, Michael would be killed in the brute's signature execution, pulling him into the moor, ripping Altman in two, all the while Markov watches on from above. Michael Altman was indeed a good man, who was fascinated by his work within geophysics, who flew too close to the sun, attempting to expose Dredgecorp and the marker to the public. However, he would instead be killed and used by Markov to become a martyr for unitology, a religion built on lies. Not much is known of Charles, but what we do know is he worked in communications in most industrial installations, most notable Dredger Corp, working as a freelancer who had information for Altman. After leaving the bar, he would be pursued by free men who would try to question him, but Hammond would kill himself before they could get to him, which puzzled them, as they weren't approaching him as threats, as they were unarmed. Hammond would end his life due to the marker whispering into his mind with its electromagnetic signal festering within him. This made him paranoid to the point of harming himself greatly. Reason as to why he was prepared to share the information could be because of fascination. However, he also expressed that he wanted to destroy the organization for whichever reason is unknown. The old Bruja means old witch, which was known to be over 1,000 years old, possessing a great deal of knowledge. Chava's mother would tell him that she existed when the Spaniards had killed the Mayans. The Bruja would tell Chava that the dreams were warnings, telling him that something is wrong and they have to set it right. She would refer to the marker as the tale of the devil that has begun to thrash about, and if they are unable to coax it back to sleep, it will bring the end of days to them. She would cross her fingers, which looks like the two sides of the black marker. The Bruja also possessed another name, Ixtab, as the townsfolk would chant the name as she passed. However, the Bruja would refer to Ixtab as the goddess of suicide, speaking as if the goddess were another entity, not within herself. She would also state that she is a goddess, she is the rope woman, she hangs in the tree, a rope around her neck, and her eyes are closed in death and her body has begun to rot, but she is still a goddess. She is the hanged goddess, the goddess of the end, and she still gathers to her those who are dead by uncertain means. Perhaps the goddess of suicide is a rationalization for those who end their own lives, much like those who rationalized changes happening within their world, like mythology or religion tales. For example, why there are thunderstorms. Well, that's Zeus's fury hailing down upon us. Or why caves exist. Well, those are entrances to the underworld. Not much else is known about the Bruja, perhaps being another piece of lore that was to be removed, like the genetic mental defense mechanism within our minds. Ada Chavez was Michael Altman's girlfriend, but she also was an anthropologist. Anthropology is the study of aspects of humans within past and present societies. 
in which she would soon use her expertise to try and figure out what is happening within the world as the black marker reactivates, sending out pulses of its signal through Earth, causing gravitational and electromagnetic anomalies. Most notable of these would be causing people to have distressing nightmares to high levels of a disturbing nature. To the point of the marker being placed into old folk lore with Ada stating, that doesn't happen. Folklore doesn't just change in an instance. However, it in fact does change over generations, corroding over time. However, the reason why the marker is now included with the Tale of the Devil folklore could be seen to be the marker manipulating humanity in an effort to incur their curiosity, as it is curiosity that killed the cat, and ignorance that will end the age of man. Ada, through her work, would meet a town drunk and a boy named Chava, who she would introduce to Altman, who would, after some persuasion, give the pair their own perspective and experiences. The town drunk would give clarity about Michael's name, saying it means Wiseman, and Chava would talk about the creature he saw on the shoreline, that being the Weezer necromorph form. Both would speak on the necromorphs, however. The drunk would only give bits and pieces of information, like a scrambled video log. Ada was aware of the military trying to cover up the strange occurrences and would plead with Altman, telling him to leave it be, afraid of their joint demise. Despite this, he would continue to gain the attention of Dredger Corp, and she would accompany Michael to the water facility, who would be acting as further motivation for Altman's good faith. After hearing of Altman's vision of her dead mother, she would become increasingly upset, asking why she, of all people, could not see her. However, she would soon make her presence known to her, which would further pull Ada into a closer relationship with the Marker, believing it can reunite her with her family. Ada at this time would be assigned to study the marker once it has been pulled up, perhaps seeing that she may be more useful than just being a bargaining chip, a hostage if you will, to make Michael comply. She would attempt to talk to Altman about the visions she had been granted when he would dismiss them as visions, rather it's the marker further manipulating them. She would then threaten to leave Michael if he did not start to believe the marker's capabilities, in which he would agree to calm her down. After their capture, returning to the water facility, and then being separated, Adam would die. However, the way she died would be up for debate, seeming as we are not told how she dies. See, Altman believes Crax kills her, but Crax would state that she killed herself after hallucinating that she was not worthy of the marker. Both are possible, but if I had to say which is the correct one, I don't think Crax had actually harmed her, even though he is a very violent man and relishes in causing other people pain. As in the book, there are two different sides to the apparitions, two teams as one of them mentions, one set of apparitions that will cause self-harm, and others that will claim to be warning them of the markers. So it is highly possible that Ada's mother drove her to suicide, telling her things that would weigh down upon her heavily, crushing her mind. However, Crax was a violent man, so I could also see him shooting her, strangling her, or doing something else to her, fueling his sick, sadistic behavior. Markov, being known or referred to as the Colonel in some instances, was an influential member of the military and of extracting the marker. He was described as having a grey pompadour haircut, slightly longer than military standard, combed back and gelled in place. 
He was an imposing figure with the square cut jaw and ice blue eyes. Markov had been appointed to act as a governmental figure for Dredger Corp during 2214. He would find Michael Altman as well, who had been investigating into the anomalies of the Gulf of Mexico. In his meeting, he would hold a gun to Michael's head, making him believe he was about to die, when all he heard was a notable click, with him claiming that the gun had never been loaded. From this instance, we already get a sense of Markov's love to install fear into others, relishing in tormenting them. However, when Altman would demand for things to be taken down into the sub to ensure his success and his safety, he would comply, ensuring another set of good faiths and not wishing an ill fate onto him for insurance that he gets what he wants. Another reason to hold Altman at gunpoint was to ensure that Michael knew who was in charge, that his life could end at the snap of his fingers. Over the course of time on the water facility, Markov would grow to respect Altman with his successful trips to the source of the pulses, thinking of him as less of a liability and more of a valued member of the team. However, after extracting the marker, Markov would list Altman and Ada as non-essential members of the team, getting his men to escort them to a mainland facility to be guarded, which was located at Dredgekorb Chikchilub's headquarters. But after a day or two, he would see the folly of his ways when seeing a transmission at Washington of Michael leaking the black marker to the people. He would then send cracks after the pair for no other reason other than revenge, but ordered the team to bring them back here. As the outbreak occurred, Markov and Krax would escape the carnage and the terror lurking within the walls, floor and ceiling vents. However, Markov would tell Harmon to destroy the records of the marker so that it could never be used against them. However, he could never have imagined what else would come of this decision when he would be presented with Michael Altman on a silver platter who would be later revived at a surgical unit. Markov would then give him a spoon whilst telling him of the plans he had for the future of the new religion, telling him that he too was a believer before releasing Krax's new form after him. Markov's involvement with the seeding of Unitology can be seen to be a manipulation effort for power and wealth as he never seemed interested in the believers or their faith before so. Perhaps he is just going along with it to ensure a better future for himself. Little did Markov and his partners know that Unitology would soon evolve into a faction that would seek to topple the government and push humanity further into the darkness. Little is known about the pair, however what is known is Hennessy had a brother called Shane who had been killed prior to the expedition and Dantec had been a part of the moon skirmishes much like Crax who had to kill others in order to preserve his own oxygen in order to survive by cutting off their air supply and linking their tanks to his suit. Dantec was a pilot inside of the sub that was commissioned to go down to the source of the anomalies and pulse waves. However, as he and Hennessy would further descend towards the black marker, they would be presented with a series of headaches that would intensify as they progressed. Hennessy would soon see Shane, who would warn him of the marker, telling him that they do not want to see what it does, that they should leave it be. However, Dantec would locate the marker, breaking off a piece of the marker. All the while, Shane had morphed together with Dantec. But when Dantec would shear off a piece and rested back in his chair, the result would kill Shane, coating him in his blood, which enraged Hennessy, who then proceeded to kill Dantec, killing him with a blunt object. However, before he did, 
Dantec would hallucinate all of the dead soldiers he had killed in order to survive on the moon skirmishes. These people would approach him, forming a line to steal his oxygen in order to survive in their new forms. With every hit of the pipe that Hennessy swung, the apparitions would place themselves over his lips, stealing the air from his lungs until his life was eventually snuffed out. Hennessy would truly go insane, using Dantec's blood to write the marker symbols all over the interior of the sub. However, when he had no more room, he would strip down to his naked body, creating a new canvas for himself, and begins to write the symbols on his body. And when the blood dried up from the decaying corpse, Hennessy would harm himself, writing more symbols with his own blood, with his own ink. He would also, under Shane's guidance, send out a transmission to the nearby installations, warning others of the marker. However, he would soon pass out from the blood loss, and all communication would be lost with the sub. Hidekai Ishimura was a scientist working in the same team on the water facility who dedicated himself to study the black marker. However, following the death of another scientist, Grote Guff, Hidekai and the other two scientists were assigned to examine the corpse, but it would soon transform and mutate into the first of many necromorph forms, that being an infector. Hidekai would escape by the skin of his teeth, and with the aid of Michael Altman, he would safely make it out of the facility, where he would go on to invent the shock point drive, making space travel faster and more efficient, and the famous planet cracker would be named after him, with that being known as the USG Ishimura. However, how Hidekai met his end is currently unknown. Possibly he could have died of natural causes, or perhaps he was assassinated by an organization to silence him about unitology. Grote was a German scientist who was a part of the team on the water facility to help study the marker. In his childhood, Grote's parents would die to unknown causes and his grandmother would take him in. However, she was old and always grumpy. She would take care of him okay, but she would do things that Grote always had a hard time of understanding. But then, when he was older, she would suddenly disappear and had never returned to the house, which Grote could have resented, but instead he would see it as a blessing in disguise. Although he always loved his grandmother, she was just hard to be around at times, always seeming miserable. Grote would soon meet someone, however, someone that he would call the love of his life, even though he never really truly met her, but he was always unsure of himself. He never knew on how to approach this woman. He would follow her around, always being observant, but never approaching. He was deeply fascinated by her, and lusted to be her one and only. He just needed to pluck up the courage to introduce himself and talk to her. However, in a cruel twist of fate, he would miss his chance, as the woman would die in an accident. This is possibly what would force him into burying himself in his work as that is all that mattered now, keeping himself busy as to not deal with the regret, the pain of losing someone of whom he never had, losing all those close to him, and being very much alone, with the only company being his colleagues and calculations of scientific equations. And with those equations came with them the first signs of an organism, However, he would see the woman he lusted for before, but this time as an apparition. However, he would call her a construct of his memories, but he did not care at all. He was so happy to see her, but when he would be visited by his grandmother, he would break down, and in a nervous and deranged state of mind, 
He would prepare a syringe with a sedative to calm himself down, especially seeming as he had not slept in days. What he did not realize, however, was what he just injected himself with. The organism he had just created is now coursing through his veins, mutating his arm. His grandmother would plead with him, telling him that he needs to get into the dead space field, that it will suppress what is inside of his arm. However, as he tries to comply, he would be shot in the back of the head by cracks and soon wheeled away from the field and to the morgue, where the next stage of human evolution, or corruption, would begin. Grote also theorized that the signal itself can create necromorphs, with something being present within the signal itself that is able to do this in relation to DNA. However, he would not talk about necromorphs, he would talk about DNA within the signal that would also lead into necromorphs, which ties into Dead Space Freeze lore. The book brings up several pieces of lore, some of which have been removed, for instance the genetic mental defense that Altman had spoken about, which would explain things. The recombinant life form, specific humans being able to live for thousands of years, aliens creating the human race, but this too could also be seen to be a belief that holds minimal weight in society. The most notable piece of lore would be the pollution that covers the Gulf of Mexico that had killed all of the fish, which in turn is the reason for necromorph fish reanimated by the marker signal, and further connects to the extreme climate changes happening called the global warming pandemic. With all of pollution in combination with the several wars over the generations had taken a toll on the planet. Another piece of the puzzle is a notable change to the marker signal, with Grote explaining that the signal also comes with a code for DNA. The book also goes into minimal detail about the mental blueprint, but only subtly before Dead Space Aftermath and Dead Space 2 comes in to explore that story more in-depthly. However, the most promising pieces of lore that cannot be changed is Michael Altman's story from geophysicist to martyr story, of how his legend came to be, where the famous quote, Altman be praised, arrived from. Despite the outdated lore, and I recommend you find a copy to read for yourselves, as the events are quite fascinating. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, then hit the like button, comment your thoughts below, and I look forward to hearing from you. Sign up to join the British Alliance today by subscribing, and bringing in the notification bell, allowing all updates so that you are always notified when new videos are issued out and streams go live. Make sure to take a look at the memberships by clicking the join button and seeing if you fancy any of the benefits and I will see all of you among the cosmos and be sure to leave having a good one.